Well, April for us is the biggest month or the month we do most of our planting here in Zone 8. And that's what we're talking about today, what you need to be doing now. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hello everyone, I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. Woo, glad to have you. So we're talking about everything you need to do now. And folks, if you ain't joined us before, we're a gardening show here in South Georgia Zone 8. And we talk every week about growing your own food. Growing your own food. 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 Yeah, heck yeah. Being self Whether you put it up or whether you eat it fresh yeah. out of the garden. So how to grow it. Yep. How to process it. How to yep. cook it. Primarily, we sell everything you need to grow your own food. Now, I'm not talking about meat. I'm talking about vegetables and fruits and things like that. So we sell seeds and we sell supplies. We sell fertilizers, tools, all that. In case you wonder who we are, glad to have you. April. Well, let's talk about our little trip last week. Okay. Yep. So we went to Dothan Friday to a Keepers of the Old Ways Homesteaders conference. conference. And we don't get out of travel a lot, but we did get over there. We did sneak away. See some friends of ours over there. It was in Dothan, Alabama, as I said. Great, great little show. They had some classes, more of a hands on type deal there. Mm -hmm. They were processing uh, pig and rabbits and chickens. They did canning classes, soap making classes, lotion classes, they had classes on fermentation. It was a really good show. Yep. A lot of our friends was there, so we had a ball. We visited with everybody. And we seen this lady selling, I guess, probably the tent that had the most activity was a lady selling herb plants. plants. And if I'm fixing to tell y'all something, this lady was selling stinging nettle in a pot. If you're from the South, you know what stinging nettle is. We have it growing wild here everywhere. Young is called fireweed. I'm gonna look up her name. And man, she would sell these things in pots of maple paper, five dollars a pot for stinging nettle. We have it growing. We can't get rid of it here. And I asked her. I said, "Does people actually know what they buy?" And she said, "Yeah, they do." And um, anyhow, we had a nice conversation about that. I call it the devil's weed. Tea berry farm. Tea berry farm. Pace, Florida. Pace, Florida. She had some nice plants. Very interesting lady talking to herbs. We love to talk herbs. So. Uh, I was mm -hmm. interested in selling fireweed. But fireweed, as she told us, and we already knew this, a lot, a, medicinal of people, herb. a lot of people boil it down and use it for Different medicine. things. It's great for arthritis. And I heard one lady say, how do you contain that? Because we have trouble. It's invasive for Very us. Very invasive. She said, you keep it in a pot. I don't know that'd work for us, but that's a good plan. Because it is spread by the seed? It is. Or rhizomes. I don't know exactly how it's spread. We can't keep it under control. It just pops up everywhere. Now, she said one thing I thought was interesting. They use it a lot for arthritis. Mm -hmm. So you can actually take the raw plant and rub it on your joint pain. And you would forget about that. And joint. you would forget about your arthritis. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it would burn you. We call it stinging nettle, fireweed, devil's weed. It feels it's like you've in a a pile of ants by you. Or you stuck your, your arm in a campfire. Yeah, yeah. that was interesting. Yeah. I did buy some mullein and some wild lettuce mm -hmm. and comfrey for her. You know, the big thing I took away from it, tinctures, tinctures, am I saying that right? Everybody had tinctures. Is the big thing now, that's huge. And we've gotten into it a little bit, but not as much as most people have. It's, man, it's, Crazy. Well, I've got all those herbs growing from the premium and deluxe um, edition. Yep. So I'm going to do some more. What you got there? What we have here, folks, is uh, a mulberry. I was fixing to tell a story. <laughs> I don't know. One of our children come in one time and said, Daddy, I got a bunch of uh, blackberries on this tree. He didn't know what they, they didn't know what it was, but it was mulberries. We have mulberries growing here, and we don't make mulberries every year. But well, we will occasionally make mulberries because most of the time the freeze, the late frost will knock our mulberries off. I've only had this tree for two years, and it's a dwarf. I actually got it up at Homesteaders of America a couple years just ago. Just a tad tarp or good? Well, you need to get one that's really, I really mushy and ripe. Have you washed these? Yeah. Cool. They look just like a blackberry. Mm -hmm. They got a little stem on them right there, unlike a, uh, a blackberry. I have a friend that's got several of these trees, and he may make a crop every 
four years because normally the frost coils knocks well, off the blooms. Well, you've got to worry about frost, then the rain comes, and birds. Birds love it. I have this tucked away, and knock on wood, the birds have not touched it yet. I've made wine out of this mm -hmm. from your friend's trees. It makes excellent wine, jam, jam jellies. jellies, awesome. And you can know when somebody's been into them because you'll get that stain on your fingers, yeah, your you lips, your tongue, your teeth. I know they've been in them over Not yet. Oh. All right. I got to show somebody one thing. And what else you got going on? Well, I got to show this right here because I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Y'all see that right there? That is a tobacco plant that I've grown from seed. And it is about four and a half, five weeks old. Tobacco will definitely test you as far as starting plants, in my opinion. This is one of the hardest things I've ever grown from a seed. Very temperamental to grow, but I've you been successful. You don't cover them up. I've been successful with them. I got nearly 100% germination, and I'm gonna have tobacco to transplant in the next few days. But wow, will they test you? Mm. Little bitty seeds, you don't cover them up. You have to keep them wet, but not too wet. You have to keep everything perfect. Actually, this one, you can tell the yellow leaf right there. Mm -hmm. Need, excuse me, need a little fertilizer, and I actually put some on there yesterday. So have you got everything in your garden planted? Just about. Not everything. We'll talk about that. Okay. I'll tell you what I've held off on. All right. All right, so what is this month? This is April. April, and what is in April? Um, in April, <laughs> <laughs> a little tricky there, it is National Arbor Day. Mm-hmm. Which, do you know the history of that? I do not. Would you please would you, tell me? Would, would you, you like please tell me? Yeah. Okay, so the pioneers, when they were moving toward Nebraska, they missed the trees. They didn't have shade, nothing for soil erosion, nothing for windbreak, nothing for fuel. Hmm. So... They said, why don't we come up with an arbor? The right? secretary of the Nebraska Territory, which was J. Sterling Morton, he loved trees, and so he did the first proposed tree planting holiday. You know when that was? Take a guess. Uh, 1896. 1872. Well, that was a few years off there, was it? And it was estimated more than a million trees were planted that day. So April is a good month to plant any type of tree. It's usually the um, last Friday of April. Yeah, now for us in the South, if you plant something in April, you normally want to plant a container tree, not a bare root. Mm -hmm. If you're going to plant bare roots down here, you normally do it in February. No problem. Yeah. Um, and all 50 states observe that now, mm -hmm. especially the school systems. Another thing too, folks, if y'all want to plant shrubbery out in the yard, ideal time to plant uh, shrubbery right now. It's cool, it's normally a little wet, so it gives those plants a chance to get established before the hot weather comes on. So perfect opportunity to get out in the yard and do any landscaping that you may need to do. Do you know what the Latin word for April is? No. Aprilis. Aprilis? Mm -hmm. It means to open. Huh. So the Latin word for May would be May Lilis. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you might better look that up. Yeah. But one thing you notice here in April is our barn swallows are back. Mm -hmm. Birds are out like crazy. Birds are everywhere and they're building nests. Um, you start seeing butterflies. I saw a butterfly yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, bees are out and active. Right. Nights are still just a little bit cool, but that's mm -hmm. that's gradually going away. Our con trees are blooming, mm -hmm. which usually means yep. all our cold weather is gone. It's gone. April, um, first of April is Easter this year, which is this coming weekend. This Sunday, this coming Sunday is Easter. So yeah, normally speaking, I messed up on that date last time. Yeah, normally speaking, uh, right after we get through Easter, all three of the cold weather is gone. So let's get into what you need to be doing now. Zones nine and ten, y'all guys in deep Florida and Texas, maybe on the edge of Louisiana. You know what? Y'all are knee deep into your plant. I don't know of anything as far as summer crops that you can't plant right now. Now we got a couple things we need to hold off on. But you guys in nine and ten, 
y'all could actually probably full get full force. Full force. Your potatoes are on up. Had a couple emails this morning. And I think people's potatoes was way up. Mm -hmm. uh, some people were having some problems with disease and insects and stuff like that. So pay attention to your uh, disease and insects. Make sure they don't get ahead of you if you're in zone 9 and 10. Otherwise, you can do your cessation planting. Plant you another crop of squash or cucumbers well because that first crop you got is probably making if not it's going to be making uh, so kind of keep that rocking and rolling get your okra in the ground you can get your sweet potatoes in the ground Ooh, middle of the month end of the month so mm -hmm. yeah you guys is on nine to ten this is your time to shine right here all right for zone seven and eight and we're going to talk about eight for a minute before we jump into seven because normally speaking i always say there's about two weeks difference between seven and eight but I don't know that I'm maybe a little bit wrong there. Yeah, we and just said that's some... hard for me to admit, a little bit wrong. But I think I may be, it may be two to three weeks off. Mm. We just had some uh, visitors come through from South Carolina, and they said they need to wait after Easter, about one to more plant. week to plant. Yeah. There's zone seven, did they say? They didn't say, but I can assume they were in a different zone and yeah. they were waiting. All right, so us here in zone eight, over the last two weeks, I pretty much got everything planted is my first planting of, of everything. When I say that, I always plant my stuff like, oh, let me think about it. Uh, I got some more cabbage and brassicas and stuff like that coming on, but I planted some tomatoes. I got a little iffy there about a week or two ago. I planted those, my corn's coming up. So I got my first round of planting done. I actually planted my green beans, my bush green blaze green beans, Hoss, this green week. blaze, bush beans. So you need, if you're zone eight, you need to go ahead and get those green beans planted. And I'll tell you the reason why. Pole beans and bush beans will throw their blooms if it gets too hot on them. Now our green blaze is the most heat tolerant of any of them. So if you're going to grow a late crop of bush beans, grow the Hoss green blaze. Pole beans are notorious for throwing their blooms off when it gets hot. So you want to plant them early on, like now. So they'll produce in May and the 1st of June. Because toward the end of June, it's going to get hot and you're going to lose them. They're going to throw the blooms off. You're going to, not going to be very productive. So our Hoss green blade, green Blaze beans is 55 days maturity. Okay, so I planted mine a couple of days ago, around the 1st of April. So that means April and May, at the end of May, we'll be picking green beans, Ooh, which will be perfect right mm -hmm. there. So get your green beans, pole beans planted in zone eight to beat the heat. You can get your cantaloupes. If you're not planting your corn, go ahead and get your corn planted. Now I am waiting probably a week or two to plant my field corn because my sweet corn is up uh, about like that. So, I've got my cucumbers planted. Mine are up. You can get, if you've already got cucumbers up, you can go ahead and get your succession planted. And again, if you haven't got any up, get them planted. Peas. Let's talk about peas. Now, I still think you can probably grow some English peas. Really? Or, yeah, I'll do it. Or sugar snaps. Mm -hmm. I would wait on my cow peas toward the end of the month in zone eight. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little early. I think the nights are just a little cool to plant cow peas right now. My English peas has just started blooming. Mm-hmm. Peppers, get those in the ground, get your transplants in the ground. Okra, I would wait. Uh, if I'm transplanting or if I'm direct seeding, I would wait toward the end of the month. Uh, I got some okra that's gonna be ready probably in about two weeks, so I'm gonna hit it perfect for my transplants. If you if you direct seed the okra right now, I think the soil would be too cool. Too cool. Cause our nights are still yeah. getting down in the 50s, so yeah. I think it'd be too cool and you wouldn't get good germination. Same there. thing with my roselle, I'm gonna wait. Mm -hmm. A couple mm -hmm. more weeks. Let's talk about herbs because we'll grow a lot of herbs this I'm year. I've got a lot of herbs. In the I think, unless you're growing them in the greenhouse, as far as direct seeding, because yarrow is one I would direct seed. I know you got some growing in the greenhouse. I already planted them. But I think, I think yarrow is one of those things you want to direct seed from my perspective. I would wait toward the end of the month on herbs. What do you think? Now, if you're growing them in the greenhouse, you yeah, can do it now. For, yeah, I would think so. Squash. And you know, I love to see a lot of people doing transplant squash, which is okay if you can do it. I direct seed squash all the time. I've got squash up this high. We're going to be eating squash within two weeks. If you haven't got your squash planted, plant it and go ahead and plan on doing succession planting two to three weeks after that so you can have a continuous supply of squash. Sweet potatoes. Mm. April 15th, we'll start shipping sweet potatoes. Theoretically, you can start planting sweet potatoes in the end 
in the end of April. However, I'm probably going to wait till May to plant mine. I always like to wait a little bit longer. But you could plant them the end of this month here in zone eight, not seven, but zone eight. Zone seven, you guys are probably going to need to wait May, at least earliest in May. Tomatoes, watermelons, cantaloupes, all that kind of stuff that we love to transplant, got them in the ground, zone eight. Still got time to get them in the ground, but I've got mine in there and they're catching hold. I just fertilized them this morning. So rock and roll and all that. What do you plant like about flowers? Time here in zone eight, plant your sunflowers. Sunflowers in the ground? I did transplant some and I've got another secession. It just depends on, I did sprinkle a few seeds just to see how we're gonna do and they did come up. So. I did, I did as well. I got some sunflowers I direct seeded, they came up and did fine. I did plant some zinnias and they have come up also. Direct seed? Direct seed. Oh, that's right, you did. Yep, now celosa, I would wait on that just a little bit because that's more of a, at least warmer weather celosa would. But your marigolds in your sun, I think you can get yeah. by with direct seed leaves. Mm -hmm. If not, you want to grow them in the greenhouse, you've got plenty of time. Heck, we'd love to grow those all summer long. So it's just the start of a very productive summer on all your flowers, whether you direct seed them or plant them in the greenhouse. And you say seven is about two, three weeks two, behind Two, three weeks behind us, yeah. All right, tobacco. This right here, in case y'all growing tobacco, you want to transplant it in the next couple of weeks. You know, I still think you got time to plant this as a seed. It's going to be a so little late. So would you step it up or are you just going to plant no, it? No, I'm going I'm to plant it directly. That's where I think you probably could step it up, but I'm planting it directly as a plug. Now, i got to be careful with it because I don't want to cover it up. But uh, that's what I'm going to do. But if you want to grow some tobacco, I still think you got time. Wildflowers. Now, all our wildflowers are blooming oh, right now. Oh, they're so pretty. But I think you probably need to wait toward the end of the month to plant those. But April is the ideal time if you're in zone eight to plant wildflower mixes. And we have become big fans of wildflowers in the last few years. Mm -hmm. Even my mother, she was here yesterday. She likes to plow things up. And she has a big issue with weeds, wouldn't you say? So last year she planted the wildflowers and I was like, now mama, you cannot hair this up because she likes to get on her tractor and mow and hair. I said, you've got to leave it alone. So yesterday she was here and she wanted to let me know that she listened to me for mm, once. Which is very unusual. <laughs> and that she did not mess with her wildflowers and they were blooming like crazy. She was so tickled. Yep. Yeah. So wildflowers, you got to plant and leave them alone and yeah, if you got a couple of weeds, if weeds are going to bother you, you probably don't need to do the wildflower road. Yeah. We put them in the area that we just leave leave alone. Yeah, now I do go up there, and if it's a big old grassy plant, I'll, something very obvious, I'll take out. And but, we mow it once a year yeah. in the fall, that's it. Okay, uh, zone five and six. Five and six, you guys can still plant asparagus. Speaking of asparagus, that may be something we have to redo in the next couple yeah, of years. Yeah, somebody cut my asparagus bed down. Yeah. We still get asparagus, but our asparagus bed is getting old. Yeah, it's so, getting old. So it's what, maybe, about 10 or 12 yeah. years old? Yep. Yeah. So if you've got zone five or six, think about putting your asparagus in. It's one of those long-term things. It's going to be three years before you harvest it, but it is well worth it. What do you think about planting asparagus with strawberries? I've seen several people do that. Why? I guess you have strawberries, so strawberries are gone, you have asparagus. Mm, I've never seen that. I guess it would work. So uh, I talked to my buddy Mike up in Ohio. He's about an hour above Dayton. Mm -hmm. Mike says his soil temperature was about 59 degrees. And zone, Mike is in zone six. And Mike said that him and Kenny was planting onions, and they're planting Nebraskas, and they're planting potatoes. That's hard to imagine. They're just now planting their onions, and we're fixing to harvest our onions this I week. I harvest some of mine today and put the freeze dryer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, zone six, harvesting onions. I mean, excuse me, planting onions, planting all the sprascas, uh, potatoes, spinach, snap peas, lettuces, and radish. All those cool seeds and things you can get in the ground that you direct seed or you put plants what in. What would you say? They're about two months behind us? Uh, we planted our potatoes in February, in February, yeah, they're about three weeks 
we'll look no, five weeks, excuse me, five, five weeks. weeks behind us. That's the reason I said a while ago, I think there's a two to three week between us and seven, and maybe a two to three week between seven and six. It's a quarter. Mm -hmm. Somewhere there. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, if you do live in zone six, you can still put you to uh, plant your tomatoes and some of your warm season crops, if you should, peppers and things like that to grow as transplants. So that's a good point there. And you can work all those warm season, you know, get your warm season crops yeah, together. Start corn, your flowers inside. Get your corn. Now, ain't time to plant corn, but you can get your corn plot ready and, uh, and get it ready for when the weather does turn around. Lettuce. Mike said he plants lettuce every, of course, I need to do this more often. Of course, ours, a bolt comes springtime. He said he plants it about every two weeks, so he has a constant supply of them. I thought that was interesting. We do that in the wintertime some. We don't do it as much in the springtime because we get so hot so quick there. They probably have a longer window to grow the lettuce. We know they grow broccoli all during the summer. Yeah, that's true. So and we can't do that. So it's, it's very interesting, the difference there. Mm. But you guys are getting geared up there. You get your plots ready, you know. And the, some they're just planting strawberries too up yeah, there. Yeah, I've seen planted. some on. Yeah, they should have already planted them. Yeah, yeah. Their night temperatures are still hovering around in the 30s and dip down late in the high 20s every now and then. But they're pretty much getting where they don't have a lot of, uh, lot of cold, cold. So they're mm -hmm. moving moving into it. You know, cilantro, some of those cool season herbs they can you can still grow up mm -hmm. there. All right, so let's move on to three and four. Man, three and four is tough. You guys in three and four, Put you in comments below what you're doing now because this is kind of a gamble for yeah, us. Yeah, some of those still have snow on the ground. Yeah, tell us the what you're doing. The still frozen. You know, I'm assuming it's going to be beets, Brussels sprouts, maybe some cabbage, carrots, spring plant with carrots will be over winter hours, cauliflower and uh, brassicas and potatoes. things. Potatoes. Like, and potatoes. Yeah, they'll be planting potatoes before long. So if you're in three and four, even if you're in five or maybe even six, put it below in your comments below where we can help everybody of what you're doing now, what you're planning now, what you're getting ready to do. Mm -hmm. So how about a garden spotlight? All right, our garden spotlight this week is Bill, I gotta put my eyes on, Lena Berry, Pocahontas, Illinois, zone six. He has flowers and vegetables. Look at those zinnias. I'm assuming this is from last year's garden. Probably. Yeah. Um, but we asked us in. That looks like, what is that? It's Squash, cucumbers. cucumbers. And kale. Yeah. Oh, More and look flowers. at those snaps. Ooh, yep. Oh, after my heart there. Speaking of snapdragons, when, he's in zone I, six. When would we plant snapdragons? That's more your thing. That's uh, more cool season. Now I direct seeded some snapdragons probably three weeks ago, and they're just now taking off. Yeah. Now I bought some um, snapdragons, and they're blooming like crazy. But now the heat to get them here. Oh yeah, quick. Quick. Old goat drawing. Old goat. So last week, a lot of people commented that the old coat was really hidden. Actually, our view time was a lot longer last week because it took them a long time to uh, <laughs> find the old goat. So this week, the old goat's getting ready for Easter. In case you didn't know, the old goat's figurine is hidden on the set here somewhere. So if you find the old goat and you locate him, Put in the comments below and every week we do a drawing for the week before. Yeah, so Who he, found the old goat? So he might be out looking for him some Easter eggs with candy in them. Uh -huh. All right, you want to draw? And the winner is, see I got that purple mulberry on the thing there. <laughs> My Urban Garden Mary. My Urban Garden Mary. Send us your shipping address to cussservehallstools.com and we'll get you a Tasty price in out. So what you got plans this week? What you what you gonna do? You got anything? Um I harvested those onions this morning a little bit early, but I was putting them in the freeze dryer. The purple onions. Yep. What was the name of those? Sapolo? Uh, no, it wasn't Sapolo. Red Maiden? Yes, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's red. 
Um, I'm going to put my uh, tomatillos out. They really need to be planted. So one thing I've noticed, we had a big rain yesterday. And for you guys in Zone H, y'all may find this interesting right here. And I went out this morning and did a little fertilization. And I realized the weeds have really popped mm -hmm. in that thread stage since that rain. So I'm going to spend the next two to three days going in there cultivating after the rain to make sure them weeds do not get ahead of me. Yeah. I got some pruning to do, some of my... Um my sesame tree, there's a couple of dead limbs. I need to clean that up before the blooms, and they haven't bloomed yet. Yep. Um, All right, folks. Corny joke. Yep. You forgot. I forgot. Go ahead. This was sent in by Maggie Lederman. Yep. She says, why are the spinach leaves never lonely? Because they come in bunches. <clears throat> Thank you, Maggie. She thought we might need some help with our <laughs> corn jokes. Oh. All right, folks, it's that time of year. We're all excited about gardening, and you should be too. If you haven't planted your garden, get on it. If you have it, make sure you stay on top of it. Don't let them weeds on top get you, get you down like sometimes they can do. And uh, man, it's just, it's that time of year. I love to go out there and watch how much things have grown overnight, especially my corn. Mm -hmm. Time to go fishing too. Time to go fishing too. Thank you for joining us. Now it's time for you to get outside and get dirty. <laughs>